Reading, Thursday the 11th of February. Read the text carefully or listen to the audio recordings. Please reread the text to answer your questions and refer to the text to give quality answers. Today we will be developing inference skills. So what is inference? Inference is where we read between the lines to gain a greater understanding of what we are looking at to reach, a lo to reach logical conclusions. So we're, we're trying to make a decision in our head based on some of the clues that have been given in the text. The answer isn't just written out in words for us so we can just lift it out like retrieval. We have to like be a detective, search for those clues in between the lines. So if we look over to the left hand side of the screen, clues may be given in the text but it doesn't give you clear answers like with retrieval questions. Some clues are given in the text and you might decide, you must decide what you learn from them. This is called developing inference skills. It can also be called reading between the lines. That is because it doesn't actually tell you the answer in words. Okay, let's use some inference skills looking at this picture. Who's in the picture? No one's told you but you're trying to make some conclusions by looking at them. Look at the clues around it. Is it hot or cold in the mountains? How do you know that? What clues do you have on the screen? How does the mountaineer feel? Why has the mountaineer chosen to climb to this location? Again, we've not been told any of this information. We're looking around for clues. And a bit like in a text, we're, we're looking around the text to see what's been described in words, telling us how someone responds or looks. So remember, one, clues may be given in the text, but it doesn't give you clear answers. Number two, some clues are given in the text and you must decide what you learn from them. And number three, the answer is not written in words, there are clues described about a person or a setting. You've got to try and find them and then you've got to connect them, join them and come to your own decision in your head as to how you can think you could best answer an inference question. Where's all that rumpus coming from? Today is the day people get their wages, but, it, but ancient Egyptians aren't paid with money like nowadays. Their wages are in useful goods like food and cereals, for example. So this is where the guilty person's accomplice bought all the ingredients to concoct the poison. A scribe is in charge of the handing out of the wages. If you look behind him on the tables, you'll see all the goods chosen by the people for their end of month wages. You can see the foods barley, linseed oil, spelt flour, spices, wool, chickpeas, hemlock, dung, cuts of beef and papyrus. On the page you can see many of the workers who come to collect their pay. You've got the, the priestess, you've got the cabinet maker, you've got the potter, you've got the embalmer with the uh, mummies, you've got the painter, you've got the weaver, you've got the doctor, you've got the cook, you've got the lawyer, and you've got the scribe there who's handing out all of the wonderful uh, pay, I, all the items of, to pay the people for their work. Where is the money? In ancient times money didn't yet exist in Egypt. All trading was done through barter, so exchanging goods or things. So you could have one of your neighbor's chickens in exchange for a sack of your cereal. It was the same thing for wages. 
Craftsmen could be paid in wool, fish, corn or wine. Scribes noted down what had been handed out each month to each worker. They could also exchange honey, wine, wheat, rice and leaves, and many more. On your tablet below, you'll find the recipe for the poison given to the apothecary. And on the scribe's tablet on the right is the list of items traded by the inhabitants of Thebes for their wages. Compare the two documents. Perhaps one of the inhabitants obtain some suspicious sounding ingredients. Could they be the guilty person's accomplice? They will come up on the next couple of slides. Ingredients for poison. Six ricin leaves. One fistful of hemlock. One flagon of linseed oil. Focus. You might discover who has concocted a dreadful poison. Have you found them? Well done. Now off you go to explore another part of town. Wool spinket the weaver. One pot of honey, ten rice and leaves, one sack of corn, five loaves of bread, one goatskin container of linseed oil. Katiti the potter. Ten tortoise shells, one sack of cereal, one goatskin containers of wine. Woodcooter, the cabinet maker, three beef cutlets, cutlets, one fistful of hemlock, half a sack of barley. Magic chorus, the priestess, three sacks of chickpeas, fifty papyrus stalks, one sack of spelt flour, three bunch of nice ripe grapes. Remedis, the doctor. Ten rice and leaves, one dose of steaming hippopotamus dung, two fistfuls of hemlock, one, three flagons of linseed oil. M Mamamet, the embalmer. Ten measures of wool, one sack of barley, ten pieces of bull's dung. Ooh, nice. Write full sentence answers using clues, inference skills from the text. Please explain in your own words why you use the clues to answer the questions below. Number one, on slide six, what would you be thinking while you stood in a busy town looking for the guilty accomplice? Number two, using slides 10 to 13, what can you infer about the information on the two documents? Who could be the accomplice and why? Number three, how would you feel knowing that someone in Thebes is relying on you to catch the criminals so the pharaoh survives? What could happen if you were successful? What could happen if you were unsuccessful? Now share your work with someone and take a photo of it and send it into school using Edmodo. Thank you.